Matthew chapter 16, verse, verses 13 to 20. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. Let us pray. Today, Lord, as your word is opened, and likewise, by your Holy Spirit, our minds and our hearts are open. Reveal to us, not by flesh and blood, but by your Spirit, who you are indeed. In our lives personally, and in this church communally. This we ask, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You may now be seated. A pleasant day to everyone. We are on a new series titled, We Your People. And this series, on its very core, okay, so magbabato muna ako ng big word, tapos gagawin nating light lang. This series is about ecclesiology. Oh, grabe naman, to church kami, parang simplihan lang natin. Ecclesiology simply comes from the word ecclesia, which is what later on we'll talk about, which is the church. And it talks about what the Word of God, we are for the next four weeks, we're going to take a look at what the Word of God says about the church. Now, why is that important, especially at this point in time? Well, for one, when the global pandemic hit, no, it disrupted our lives. One of the areas of our lives that was, that was disrupted was that of our communal life in the church. And so during this time of pandemic, many people started to have their own understanding, their own definition their own idea of church. And there's even this talk of the new normal of the church. Now for all of what the pandemic has provided for us, technology, you know, you, the usage of technology, getting used to some things that we were never used to before. Dati hirap na hirap ako pag may camera sa harap, di ko alam paano ako mag act Ngayon, di ko na lang siya pinapansin. Ganun pa rin. Di ba? But with all of that, with all of the changes that has happened, the good thing about the Word of God is that there are certain things that doesn't change. And so what we're going to do for the next four weeks is we're going to look at God's Word, and instead of our own ideas, our friends' ideas, or certain blogs, alam ko nagbabasa tayo sa ngayon kasi ang bilis nalang i-Google mo. Diba? I-Google mo yan. Eh, ang Google-Google yun nun eh. Minsan. Kaya nag-Googlehan ka. Kasi Google ka ng Google eh. So, imbis na doon tayo nagpupuntahan, different sources, is it okay that in the next four weeks, 
We are going to journey through the Word of God because whether you like it or not, or whether you like it or else, no? alam naman natin, most of us, we are really grateful to God that He saved us. Sino sa inyo, because of, you are grateful for the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. Okay, wala. Di ba lahat naman tayo grateful? We're grateful for the life that God has opened up for us. We're grateful that when we receive Him as Lord and Savior, we can have eternal life with Him. But one of the things that we sometimes skip over is the fact that while we're still on earth, kasi minsan nang iniisip na natin heaven, eh kung talagang heaven lang, dapat nung binaptize ka, hindi ka na inakyat. I baptize you! Itong ka na sa heaven, di ba? Hindi. Nandito pa rin tayo sa earth. And God saved us from our sins into a purpose. And part of that purpose is that purpose is lived out with a people. That we were not just saved. Our faith is not just personal, but it is communal. And there, most of the time, that's what we do not understand. That's the thing that we miss out on. And ang prayer natin dito, if we want to be launched into our full purpose, if we want the fullness of the life that we have in Him, part and parcel of that is understanding our part in His body as the church. Of course, when we talked about Cornerstone, we already had a glimpse of what it means to be a part to be a living stone with the cornerstone as Jesus, Jesus as cornerstone. But today we're going to take a look at that verse. Yung binasa kong verse, yung iba sa yun, yung binasa ko, yun na naman. Eh, alam ko na yun. Memorize na memorize ko na yun. But again, we're going to take, how many of you know that, that we cannot exhaust the depth of God's word? And again, we're going to take a look at this word from the vantage point of what did Jesus mean when he say, I will build my church? What, did he, what does he mean? That in this very scripture was the, was the germ, parang pangit, no? Parang si Kuya germs lang. Was the, was the seed, yan na lang, pag, pwede kasing germ eh. Pero it was the seed thought of what the church should be. Whatever we see the church is now came from what was said in this passage of scripture. So pag naintindihan natin, dito na, this, this is the first mention of the word church. And so in seed form, we see what the church is all about. And that when, pag nagkagulo-gulo minsan, nagkaroon ng pandemic, nagkaroon ng gera, binabalikan natin kung saan yung seed thought ng church. And from there, we build again properly. So this is the word that we go back to. When we lose our way when we are disoriented by the times and the situation and the circumstance and we go back to God's word so that we are reoriented back and say ito pala ibig sabihin ng church this was what Jesus was thinking when he said church and this is my hope that after this four weeks after this four weeks you will all of us including me will have a stronger conviction about the, what the church is all about and that even in the future when the church again faces a challenge whether that be another election three years from now whether that be another pandemic covid 22 takot ng iba pastor naman tama na di ba whatever it is that we will face the church will remain the church because as his people, we, his people, okay, we your people, understand what the church is all about. And so today, we are going to take a look at this very, tinatawag nating seminal passage. When you say seminal, it is also, the root word of seminal is seed, which means out of this verse, comes all other things. When, when later on, all other verses that we will study, second, third, and fourth week, we look back to this. And it's just propagating forward. It's a seminal verse from which all practices and teachings of the apostle is derived. Are you ready? 
to understand what the church is. Excited ba kayo maintindihan kung anong ginagawa nyo every Sunday dito? Hindi pa rin talaga. Kahit anong tanong ko, walang sagot. With that said, let's, again, let's now dive in to Magreconnect daw ako. Yan. Let's all dive in the verse. And again, I like the title, We Your People, because what it says at the core of what the church is, and not really at the core, because there's something at the core of the church, and this is not the idea, but the title says that the church is not just a building. It's a people. And that's why when the pandemic hit, the church never closed. Alam niyo ba yan? Sino sa inyo, tingin niyo nag-close yung church? Hindi. Tuloy-tuloy yung church. We are part of the church, and as long as we continue to gather in whatever way possible, the church will never be closed. Yung building nag-close. Itong building na to. This shell, which is nothing more than an empty space without the person next to you. Tingnan mo yung person next to you. Tingnan mo. Yan, church yan. Part yan ng church. Yung iba, pastor, basilika po siya. Medyo malaki po siya. Tapos so, pagtingin mo maliit, pastor, chapel lang po. Kasi maliit lang siya. Okay. With that said, let's go to verse 13. So all of this idea and the truth of the church comes from a question from Jesus. And it's interesting, not just the question, but where the question was asked. So it says here, now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi. So pwede naman niya itanong to kung saan saan, pero bakit sa Caesarea Philippi? Yan. Ano ba yung meron doon? And by God's grace and provision, and I'm grateful for this, I was able to go to this place. That very place. Hinahanap ko nga yung mga picture ko. Hindi ko mahina kasi ako sa mga picture pic. Alam mo naman tayo, yung social media, ano ko nga, wala, media lang, walang social. No? Pero, butin lang may Google. So, nag-Google ka siya, but I could remember the exact where I stood Caesarea Philippi, this place, the district of Caesarea Philippi, looks something like this. Yan. Of course, they said that when Jesus was passing by, he was somewhere on top, looking down. Kasi mas maganda yung view niya. Pero mas maganda yung view na to kasi makikita mo tagay. And I'll show you why I picked this picture out of all the pictures of Caesarea Philippi that I had. And... So, this is a picture of Caesarea Philippi. It, is, it used to be a, what? The, the, the site of the Temple of Pan. Okay? Now, Pan means in Greek, many. It's a pagan temple. Uh, for some, it's believed that Pan was the god of desolation. Whatever it is, mas maganda yung idea ng pan of many gods because when you go to this, pag naglalakad ka dito, and you're looking around, you will notice things like this. Marami yan, all around. So, it's a rock, it's a big rock. Ayan na, rock now. It's a big rock. And in that rock, Okay, in the sense na kayo na di. So, on that rock, carved at the side of the rock, are these small, now, pag tingin mo siya, openings, no? Medyo shallow lang siya. Tingin nyo, para saan yan? Tama. Oh, may narinig ako. Ano Ano ulit? Tama, tama. Idols. So maraming idols dyan nilalagay. Paiba-iba. And everyone who goes there 
can pick a God they want to worship depending on what they needed. Kasi siyempre lahat ng God represented the United Nation of Gods. Yan. 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 And so, in this place, and this place is a place of, if you think about it, pag ikaw ay worshiper, it's a place of, not naman confusion, but it's just so many things about confusion about the real God, if you think about it. Sino ba talaga dito? And if you think about it, if you go there, di ba, parang dami naman, kayo ka ba talaga magpa-pray? And in that scenario, Jesus asked his disciples. And the question was this, who do people say that the Son of Man is? This question, and later on we'll get back to this, is what is the question that really launched the church? Because the church is not about an idea. It's not about an ideal, or else that would be, it's not about, or else it will just be a club, diba? It's really about a person. It's about, it's not, a, the church is not about a what, it's about a who. Kaya ang unang tanong in talking about the church is who do people say the Son of Man is? And the way we understand who God is will dictate how we will conduct ourselves in the church. Pag magkaroon lang ng gulo, magkaroon lang ng eleksyon, nagkakamali na tayo kung para saan ang church. But ang church hindi nagme-make ng stand. Bakit ang church? Because we have forgotten that the church is not a political machinery. It's not about pushing an agenda. It's not in an agenda that of what? Politicians who we don't even know. So the church was never like that. Pero, but ang bilis nating madala. At when our church somehow, grabe naman dito sa victory, bakit tahimik natin? Tahimik? Ang ingay na natin every Sunday. Lakas nga ng boses ko eh. Pero it's not what you want me to say because you now have the wrong idea of what the church and who this church is based on. That's... So dito pa lang, alam mo na, sa question pa lang ni Jesus, gets mo na, that the church is about who. So ang unang sinabi sa mga disciples, and this is really good, who do people say the Son of Man is? Now, medyo hindi ako mag-dive into kasi, bakit Son of Man? Ba- dami niyan. Babalik pa tayo sa Daniel, explain. But, but it's a title that talks about on some scriptures in the Old Testament, the humanity, the humanity of Christ, in some scriptures, it's the deity of Christ. Why? Because Jesus is fully God and fully man. In lang naman yun eh. So, hindi natin, hindi, kasi hindi yun yung topic natin, I will not dive deep into that. That's another preaching in itself. Ang focus natin yun is the church. Doon tayo magtatagal. Pero it starts with what? It starts, everything about the church starts with who. For whom are we doing what we are doing? Yung mga agenda na gusto, para kayo no ba yan? Para sa kay, ano ba yan? Ayaw ako magsabi ng pangalan kasi baka mabasya ko eh. Siya pala kakampi mo, pastor. Siya pala binyorto mo. Nagalit pa sa akin, di ba? Para kanino ba? Who? And ito pa, the first question was this, who do people say I am? Because most of us, and this is sad, most of us do not develop our own conviction of who Jesus is. It is sad to say that on a Sunday, many people who are seated on the church do not really have a conviction, their own conviction of who Jesus is. They sit, we sit here thinking, and the, our idea or the truth we know about Jesus, we only got from someone. My appeal to all of you is this, in as much as every Sunday, we work hard to really preach to you the word of God. And the hope is that you will increase in your knowledge of God. There is a responsibility, a personal responsibility. 
your personal responsibility, my personal responsibility to get to know who Jesus is. To have a personal encounter, not who do people. So if you're here today and everything you know, pag, pag nag muni muni ka, and you start to think about what you know about Jesus, how do you know him? And all your answers are derived from what you've heard, not something that you have really digged into, then maybe. Kaya ang bilis nating madala. Because if all we know about Jesus is from someone, then someone else will come along with more persuasive, persuasiveness, more charisma, madadala ka naman doon. Eh, paano kung loko-loko siya? Kaya maraming tao, they follow the wrong Jesus. Because someone else comes along and they give what? They present a wrong Jesus. Ayun, follow naman, kasi persuasive eh. So Jesus says, who do people say I am? Because, inaalam lang niya. Kayo ba, ano bang mga naririnig ninyo? And that's why, yung next question niya is, and then, of course, I mean, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah. That in itself, may reason kung bakit yan yung sinasagot. But just the long and short, because hindi yan ang focus natin, the long and short of those answers means this. That in as much as Jesus declared who he was, he, he's been preaching somehow about the kingdom of God and is given and has shown miracle, people continue to try to diminish who he is. He is diminished to John the Baptist, to Elijah and Jeremiah and other prophets. Now, question for today. Today, is this still true? But when we, sometimes when we share about Jesus, when we ask people about Jesus, people diminish who Jesus is. Because if they don't diminish G, who Jesus is, we are accountable to who he is. Nakakatakot yun. And even the Pharisee of those days had to diminish. Kailangan hindi si Jesus who he claims to be. Or else we have to let go of our lifestyle and follow him. One of the biggest obstacles to submitting to him is admitting who he is. And so we try to diminish. At it's a good teacher lang siya. Tao lang naman siya. All of those things is the same idea that you see here. But let's move on. And now, just like what I was saying a while ago, he drills in to this question. And these, these are the most fundamental question that you can ask yourself about when, when you're... When, about the church and being part of it. He said, but who do you say? Narinig mo sila. Naniwala ba kayo? So si, si Jesus, sinasabi niya, naniwala ba kayo? Kayo, can you even articulate if you were to be, to be asked, who do you think Jesus is? Do we have an answer? Or would we have the same answer as the others? Elijah, this is John the Baptist. It's so funny, the story behind those names. Kung bakit? Bakit John the Baptist? Bakit Elijah? If we would go through that, it, those are funny stories of why people, some of it were superstitious, in fact, in their thinking. Kaya yun yung mga piniling pangalan. Iba sa'yo, sabihin mo na, no, 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 no. Bruno, no, no. Because we will not talk about Bruno. We will go straight to church. Kasi yun ang kailangan natin matutunan. Okay ba yan? Amen? But who do you say? And Simon replied. So ito na yun. Simon replied, si Peter, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Wow. Yan yung matinding sagot. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, nung narinig ni Christ yung sagot na yan, he was astounded. Sabi niya, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Meaning, ito yung hope natin, no? In order pala for us to really know and progress and deepen our knowledge of our Jesus Christ, flesh and blood is not enough. Meaning, nakita mo ako, I'm trying to preach, I'm believing God, I'm always studying the word, I am not enough. Flesh and blood is not enough. 
Okay, sabi niya, flesh and blood is not, but by, but this was revealed, it was not revealed this to you, but sino reveal? My Father in heaven. And sabi niya, and I tell you, kung bilis, sabi ni pastor, ang bilis nila yung pastor ngayon ah. Okay, well, relax lang kayo. Kala niyo lang mabilis. Na-excite na yung iba eh, nagliligpit na, ako makakapag-lunch tayo. Okay, ilabas niyo muna yung biskwit ninyo. Papunta pa lang tayo. <laughs> and I tell you, you are Peter. Nasinam, you are Peter. And ito, ito ang pinaka. Alam niyo ba na, this is one of the most confusing verses ever in church history. Many branches of Christianity came out of this. And this is my hope today. We will look at what they have, what they have seen in this verse, and put them all together. Galing nito. Some only took one, and what? And jettisoned the other. In ignore. Have you ever wondered why, when Jesus or God speaks to the Scripture, He allows a certain wide range of understanding it's because that's how all encompassing his words are in truth and so we will take a look at and some of you kung saan man ang pinanggalingan nyo sabi nyo oh yun yung pinaniniwalaan ko dati oo actually tama yun pero kulang yun yun eh ang ginawa lang natin eto lang yung paniniwala ko about this verse kaya dito lang ako ang gagawin natin we will take a look at the totality of what the answer of Peter meant. Sabi niya, I tell you, you are Peter. And on, eto, dito tayo mag, magkakamp. On this rock, kumbaga, itatak mo sa bato. Sabi ni, eh, dito nakuha yung itatak si Jesus. Taktakaist it. Di ba? On this rock, now many, there are, and I'll present to you what I believe as you look at the full range. And I'm not going to say this because I read it in a commentary. I'm going to say this because if you read the Bible, it is what the Bible says about this. Are you ready? Kasi yung iba pag binasa, on this rock, o si Peter, maraming ganon. Okay? Meron bang truth doon? Meron. Okay? So we will take a look at all of this, itong rock na to, kasi alam mo bakit? Pag hindi na natin naintindahan yung on this rock, kawawa yung church, kasi the church is what? Built on this rock. Church tayo ng church, hindi naman naintindihan yung rock. Ano nangyari? Mag rock and roll. Tayo, di ba? Magkakagulo-gulo tayo. And so, that's why, Dito tayo magpo-focus. What does on this rock mean? And to best understand that, it's okay to read commentaries. We have so many good scholars out there. But the best thing is to look at how Peter, what did Peter say about this? Basahin natin kung ano, kasi minsan, i-invento, invento tayo kung anong meaning. Eh, ba't di natin basahin? Eh, si Peter yung pinagsabihan. Di ba? Tingnan natin paano isinabuhay ni Peter yung on this rock. Kasi if you think that on this rock means Peter is the rock, ay may problema tayo doon. Because Peter never claimed it. All of the preachings of Peter, even in the early church in Acts chapter 4, cornerstone, ano yung sabi niya? For there is no name under heaven by which man could be saved. And then he goes to Psalm 118 and he said, Jesus, our cornerstone. Hindi pala siya yung rock. Hindi ako nagsabi nun, ha? Kasi baka mag... Hindi! Pastor, mali ka! Hindi po ako nagsabi. Si Peter po yung nagsabi nun. Kung magagalit kayo, pagdating sa heaven, hanapin nyo kung sino yung may manok. Siya yun. Kausapin nyo. Kasi siya lang ang may manok sa heaven. Siya lang yung pina... No pets allowed dun eh. Siya lang yung pinayagan. Na-joke lang. Yung mga notes... Yung, bakit nino-note nyo yun lang? 
Dami-dami importante sinabi. May manok pala doon. No, what? Mali. Okay, so hindi yun yun. Okay, go, go. Basta no pets allowed, ano? Alright, so. Sabi ni, so, babalik tayo sa church mamaya. The church, sabi niya, ah, babalik tayo doon sa ano, you are, importante yung you are Christ, the son of the living God. Ha? Babalikan natin yun. Pero bago natin balikan, aralin natin yung on this rock. Okay. So, i-eliminate na natin. Kasi, sabi niya, you are Peter, a pebble, and on this boulder. On this big, they were standing on a big rock. And on this rock, I will build my church. Now, first of all, if you look at Peter, okay, many would say, and I would agree with them, that it is not Peter who was the rock, not this rock. This rock was the confession of Peter, the faith comp- confession of Peter was that rock. And what is the faith confession? What's the faith confession? You are the Christ, the Son of God. Tama? Yun yung confession. So pag-uusapan natin yung confession na yun. Kasi yung, the idea that the rock is the confession and the idea, ano yung isa pang idea about the rock? That the rock is Jesus Christ himself. Now, kayo ba, just by common sense alone, do you think the rock is Jesus Christ? Yun, ano yun? Parang Old Testament pa lang. Pag sinamong the rock, Okay, iba yung the rock ngayon. Si Dwayne Johnson yon. Okay? Pero pag sinabi mong the rock from the Old Testament, pag sinabi mong my rock and my salvation sa Psalms, sino yon? Si God yon. So everything that has to do with rock has to do with God. And who is Jesus? Fully God, the Son of Man, fully man. And so everything. So yon madali yon. To understand. Now, what, whether, wherever you fall, listen to me, ha? Kahit anong paniwala, hindi, tingin ko, si Jesus yun. Mali-mali ka. Hindi, kasi sinabi niya, this is Peter and on this one. So, dapat yung confession ni Peter yon. Whatever you may believe, if it's the faith confession of Peter or Jesus, one thing's for sure, it goes back to this statement, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Tama ba ako? Because how did Jesus characterize, how did Peter characterize you? How did Peter answer who Jesus is? You are Christ, the Son of the living God. So, wag na natin, kung nandun kayo, wag niyong pag-awayan. Pareho kayo ng sinasabi. Kasi the faith confession of Peter, the act of him, which is not his own, which is the Father did, did something in him, he confessed it, it was revealed to him, confess who Jesus is. And ito yon. Ito yung pinaka-importante sa rap. So lahat tayo dito, dapat pare-pareho tayo. Ha? Okay? Hindi pwedeng paiba-iba. Two, sta- two parts of the statement. Number one, you are the Christ. What is the Christ? Christos. The word Christ means the anointed one. In Hebrew, it's Meshach or Messiah. Do not inakuwang the Messiah. Now, when you say Messiah, it's the anointed one. What does that mean? Listen to me. The Christ speaks of the full humanity of Jesus because the anointed one, listen to me, the anointed one refers back to the Old Testament. And if you closely study the Old Testament, the, there are three offices in the Old Testament that are anointed. The king, the priest, and the prophet. And the Old Testament said this, one day a king will come who is the, uh, the not just anointed, but the anointed one. In the line of who? David. David was a, a type. Pag binasa mo ang buong Old Testament, David offered in the, he was the king. He was a prophet in the Psalms. And when he offered in the temple, no one reclamized. Wala nagreklamo. Reclamized, no? So along the line of David will come the anointed one who has the office of the priest, 
who has the office of the king, who has the office of the prophet. Pag sinabing Messiah, yun ang ibig sabihin. Kasi ibig sabihin, tayo lang parang, ano ba ibig sabihin ng Messiah? Eh pag hindi natin alam, the everyone who claims to be a Messiah, ah, ako, Messiah. Yung pala nakapalda. Messiah siya. Yung pala ibig sabihin, Messiah ako. Diba? Yung iba kung ano na itsura, Messiah pala. Iba-iba yon. So, so, hindi yun ang ibig sabihin ng Messiah. Pag sinabing, I am the Messiah, in Matthew was written for a Jewish audience. And the reason that is important for us today is because of this. The Jesus who is the rock, according to Peter, oh, di ba? It's one thing, the confession and who Jesus is. The rock is our king, our priest, and our prophet. Let's talk about that. He is our prophet. What does the prophet do? The prophet is what you call the covenant enforcer. These are the people who would open the word. They are not people who predict. They are the people who actually preach. Now, was there no predictive uh, messages? Meron. Very few. And all predictive messages, listen to me, ah, para lang magkaroon kayo ng proper understanding on predictions. Okay? If you look at all of the prediction in the New Testament, okay, it's really all pointing to the Messiah. It really has nothing to do, in particular, with your own personal life. Kaya yung mga pupunta sa mga abomination yun kay God. Because ang sinasabi niya, pupunta ka dyan para hindi ka na pumunta sa akin. So that was an abomination. Because ang prophets are not primarily there to predict. Hindi sila Madam Auring of the Old Testament. Kailan niyo pa ba si Madam Auring? Ah, anyway, skill. I-Google yun na lang. <laughs> Dati yun para maguluhan kayo. That's not. When Jesus is said to be the prophet, it's someone who opens the word of God and always reminds people of the covenant. So every Sunday, when someone preaches here and opens, and then they preach, we're covenant enforcers. That's really what a prophet is. So in the church, listen to me, who is built on Christ, the covenant must be preached. Hindi, hindi self-help. Five ways to be a better you. So, uh, may, may pa. Hindi tayo, hindi tayo self-help. Because the Bible, listen to me, is not a self-help book. It's a get-help book. You, we need help. And we need Jesus for help. We need to be saved. Yes, we share natin yung gospel because the gospel says we cannot save ourselves. We cannot help ourselves. We need to be rescued. We need to get help. Prophet. A priest. What does a priest do? In its priestly, in its priestly office, a priest mediates between man and God. They help them approach God. We, they do services that helps people who are far away to draw near. Can I just say something? Bago ko sabihin to, may tanong ako. Sagot kayo, ha? Hindi yung... Sino sa inyo, you've given your life to Jesus? Sino render mo? Lord nyo siya, Sid. Huh. Yung tatlo, nasa harap pa kayo. Kala nyo? Kala nyo, titignan ko na yung nasa likod, di ba? Ayan. Ay, yung tatlo, kunin mo yung pangalan, na Itong tatlong to, lagot kayo, buong service kayo na. Kayo ang taya. Or, <laughs> Look, a priest, who, who is, nako, na ma advance to ng konti, no? pero kailangan nyo maintindihan to. Ah. A priest, is those who are far away to help those who are far to draw near. Question, far away ba kayo kay God? Actually, pag church ka at na-save ka na, hindi ka na far away. Actually, part ka. Ito, tayong lahat. We are part of the people who helps others draw near to God. We have, as the body of Christ, naku, napipreach ko na yung mga ibang weeks. Balik tayo. Si Jesus... Na excited, na excited. Hindi kasi ulitin ko ah, lahat ng makikita nyo about the church comes from the priestly 
prophetic and kingly anointing. Eh, sino ba ang church? Body niya. So if you think you're coming here to draw near, folks, good news, you are already near because of the finished work of Christ. Anong draw near? Yung iba kailangan, tulungan mo. Ikaw, near ka na. Galing, di ba? Okay, balik tayo kay Jesus. <laughs> See, tingnan mo, ha? kung naintindihan mo what a Messiah is, maintindihan mo lahat ng preaching about the church in the New Testament. Doon pa lang tayo sa Christ. Nag-heavy breakfast ba kayo? <laughs> Isang word pa lang yan sa confession ni Peter. Buong buo na ang preaching mo sa church. We can actually end and your understanding of the church. This seminal idea, this seed thought will start to grow. And your understand. Kaya pag pupunta ka ng church, iba na. Iba na yung dating mo. Hindi ka parang, oh, ang layo. There's something wrong if every now, am I saying that there's never a time that we are down and troubled and we need a helping hand and nothing, oh, nothing is going right? Oh, your eyes and think of me. Do you alam yo? And soon I will be there. <laughs> Meron. And so, the church is also a... Wow, nako. Bago. Nagiging church. Kasi church naman to. Pero, grabe. Priests. Primarily. Kaya alam mo itong church na to, hopefully every Sunday, we are inviting people who are far away to draw near. Every day of the week, we are sent out so that people who are far away can draw near. Alam mo bakit? Because the priest, Christ, is the anointed one. Saan ibibuild yung church? On this truth. On this rock. So pag alam mo yung rock, alam mo anong itsura nung edifice ng building. Prophetic. That's why Pag nagpi-preach tayo, ito lang ang pinanggagalingan ng pinipreach natin. Napansin nyo ba? Hindi ba kayo nag... Ito na naman si pastor, bubuksan doon naman yung Bible. Eh sorry, wala na akong ibang pwedeng buksan. Ito lang. And you know, this Bible will not change its message. You know why? Because it's meant to change you and me. Parang awa nyo na. We were not meant to change this. Ay, palitan natin, luma na. Hello? And you will notice this. Pag binabasa mo to at binabago ka ng word ni God, every time you open the same pages, it is different. Because you're being changed. So folks, prophetic. That's the prophetic one, the anointed one. Grabe, Christos pa lang yung pinag-uusapan natin. That one word is the foundation, one of the foundations. Another office that is anointed. Kailangan ko na mag-move on. Kasi tinatayman ako nung nasa likod nyo. Ikaw na. Kano mo kita ka na? Sige lang. <laughs> Sabi ng iba, hindi na talaga po magbabolunteer dito. <laughs> eh, yung mga hindi nga nagbabolunteer, di ba? The king. The office of the king. The office of the king is to tell us and always speak of the rulership of Christ. He is the head, the rulership of God in our lives. That every time we come here, eto pa, when you talk about king, listen, listen, it always translates to citizenship. Listen, listen. Magpolitika tayo ng konti. Pag nag-usap ng king, 
automatically you are a citizen if you're part of the kingdom. Listen to me, huh? three years from now, as citizens of the Philippines, we will again exercise our right to suffrage. Di suffer, suffrage. Boboto tayo ulit. Meron na naman mag, uh, ano, mag ngampanya. And ito yung hope ko. Kung citizen lang kayo ng Pilipinas, mag away away tayo. Kasi iba-iba tayo ng idea about the Philippines. Pero pag citizen tayo ng heaven, we will learn to speak with one another in love and have unity in the midst of diversity. So question, what citizenship are you embracing? Is it your Filipino citizenship? Is it your senior citizenship? Kasi ano lagi ako nasasabihan eh. Senior po. Nakita mo to? Hmm? Senior ka dyan? Boboto ako, di ba? Senior po. Dito ako pipila sa mga pang bata. Dala ko pa yung Kindle ko. Ah, kasi bata pa naman ako. 25. 25 years ago. You are the Christ. Listen to me. I can go on with this. But listen, when, 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 when Peter said, you are the Christ, all of those pictures from the Old Testament came alive and said, on this rock. If the church fails to talk about the rulership of God in our lives, if the church does not preach from this word, if the church does not help draw people near to God, let's uwi na tayo because that is not the church. Hanap tayo ng church na gumagawa nun because those church is built on the rock. The son of the living God. This one is a full teaching on theology. Hindi natin pupuntahan yun. Tayo matatapos. But the long and short of this, of understanding, and ito, kailangan yung ano, ma, 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 ma-gets to. At ako rin, kailangan ko siya ma-gets in increasing manner. When, when Peter said that he is the son of the living God, from his anointed, messianic, humanic, hum, office, human offices, now we talk about his deity, his heavenly office. Ulitin ko. Christ, human office. King, priest. Wow. Are you getting excited about the church? Nako, next week, babaklasin natin yan. Tapos makikita nyo, kaya pala ganyan na sinabi ni Peter, kaya pala ganyan sinabi ni Paul. Okay. Ano yung ano? The son of the living God? His divine office. His heavenly office. He is God. And what does it mean for him to be God? What does it mean for Jesus to be God? It means this. That as we partake, and as we exercise, and as we as by extension, live out the priestly, the kingly, and the prophetic office. Diba? Habang ginagawa natin yung sino sa inyo minsan, no? Preach ka ng preach, ginagawa mo ng lahat. Pero pag nakita mo pa rin yung Pilipinas, parang, 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 parang walang nangyayari. Let's talk about personally. Nag-reach out ka sa isang tao. Pinagpe-pray mo naman. Because you are a, that's your priestly duty to pray and intercede. Pero wala pa rin nangyayari. Parang kung ano yung ina-anticipate mo, it's not happening. What does the Son of the Living God mean? It means this. That He, Jesus, who is the rock of the church, is in control and we are not. And that in all of our actions... In all of the things we do, even in the name of Christ and, and, and for the service of His body, the church, when things does not pan out, when things are not what? Going according to our idea. 
Yung iba dito, bakit siya naging presidente? Lord, nandiyan ka ba? Yung iba naman, yes, Lord, siya yung naging presidente. Whether you celebrated or you mourned for this nation, one thing's for sure, it's not that one person up there who's going to make it happen for this nation. It is the son of the living God. And that in our, in our series on kings and kingdom, we saw a glimpse in the Old Testament of how God moved through his people in spite of judgment, in spite of the people. Minsan tayo, ang dami nating, ang yabang natin mag-demand kay God. Di ba minsan? Ang yabang natin mag-demand kay God. Have we ever even ask ourselves, have we been living right? Have we been doing what God? Hindi. But in spite of that, God continues to fulfill His purpose and beyond kings and kingdoms. We know that there is a God who is in control and that Jesus, Jesus, who is the rock of the church. Folks, we continue what we are called to do regardless of what we feel like the result is because we have a God who is the son of the living God and He is in control. Because everything we do, gusto natin short term agad, mayroon agad mangyari. Microwave na microwave, gusto natin, hindi. Many plans of God, ang tagal. Pag sabi kay Abraham, you will have a child. Eh ba yung tandaan ni Abraham? Wala pa din. Dumating ba? Oo. And out from him, he became the father of nations. We have a son of the living God so folks, etong church natin na to, tayo, how many of you believe you are called in Victory Pasay? Come on now. All right. Whatever happens in this city, we will continue to honor God and make disciples, and we will leave the results to our God, the God who is in control even if it seems like things are not in control. Kaya ang church, centuries nang dinidestroy, minamartir, sinusunog. Hanggang ngayon, sinusunog pa rin siya. We just don't know it. But in different parts of Africa, in different parts of China, but the church is still advancing. Why? Because, sabi nito, the gates of hell will not prevail on it. Okay, so, nasa, nasa rock pa rin tayo, hindi ba ako tapos? Ay, inanon mo na eh. Hindi. Balik nga, sa on this rock eh. Magliligpit ka na? Labas mo ulit notebook mo. Ay ba, ligpit agad na eh. Ang bilis nung ganun eh. Hindi. Labas mo ulit yung ano mo, Skyflakes. Okay. Hindi pa tayo tapos sa On This Rock? On This Rock, you could see the humanity and the first person of the confession, the seed form of the church, the confession, the head and the body starting. Where the head is the one who directs as the Messiah and the Son of God and the body who has the right confession of faith? Oh, so lahat pala yun, totoo at tama? Yes! Bakit ba natin pinaglalaban yung dalawang yun? Some scholars interpret it as this, some scholars hindi. Both of them are true. Because Peter was the seed form of the church. Of course. And today, Dapat yun din yung confession natin pag tinanong tayo about who Jesus is. Jesus is no less than Christos, the Messiah, and no less than the Son of the living God. Pag yan nakuha natin, everything else will fall in its proper place. Every doctrine, every mystery in this Word of God will be received with faith. Because it starts with a person, not with an idea. Who is Jesus to us? But wait, there's more. Jesus said this 
on this rock. Now, he was not sitting, he, they were not standing on this vantage point. Now, let me just say you, tell you something. This place is a very popular place. During the time of the intertestamental period, wars were raging, and many armies would go here. Because inside of this, this place, yan, 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 yan. Meron dyang spring. May tubig dyan. So, nakapasok ako dyan. Tapos umin, hindi, hindi ko ininom. Ginan mo lang kung malamig o hindi. Pakakala kung ano nung nakalagay doon, di ba? So, andyan, may tubig dyan. May spring yan. And many of the armies would drink, get refreshed. And later on, when this was, pinaganda to ni Herod Philip the Tetrarch. Nagka-temple-temple to. And this one, maraming tao takot pumunta sa kweba na yan. Because this was a cave along with all of the worship. Para matagal na itong may mga worship, ha? ginandahan lang yung building, yung temple. It's believed to be that's the gate of Hades. Yan mismo, yung hole na yan. So yung sinasabi natin, gates of Hades, si Jesus, hindi siya nag invento ng isang place. Lahat ng tao, alam yung kweba na yan. Kinatatakutan yan dati. Tsaka na, eerie siya pag pumunta ka. Hindi iwi, ha? eerie. Yung na, medyo nakakatakot yung feeling pag puntahan mo. Okay. Iba yung iwi. So inside of that, yan, yan sa, na, natakpan ko na yung kweba, di ba? Inside of that is known to be the gates of hell. Yan, nandyan yung gate. The gates of hell will not prevail. Now, listen to me. Okay? Ito yung wala sa commentary, pero makikita mo sa word ni God. Okay lang ba yan? Okay. So, this one was the gate. And the gate is not only for defense. A gate is a two-way. Tama sa gate nyo, papasok lang ba o palabas lang? Both ways. So, it's believed to be when the gates of hell are open, they send out the demons. Ganun yan eh. Mga, mga ganun yung mga thinking sa minds ng mga tao. Ang sinasabi ni Jesus, whether it's coming out or our, whether we're attacking, sabi niya, on, listen to me, on this rock, in this world, His church, which is founded on the confession that He is the Christ, the Son of the living God, His church will be placed in the middle of idolatry, in the middle of places where He is not worshipped, in the middle of places where people are confused, and the gates of hell will not prevail. The church was not meant to be a, 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 a group of people who's afraid. Nako, grabe sa mundo, ang dumi-dumi, ang dumi-dumi. Hindi. Pag dumating yung church, lilinisin natin yan. Why? Because the church on this rock, if you look, if imagine mo si Jesus, I was imagining it nung nandun ako. Wow. Kung ako ang nakausap ko si Jesus, Nai-imagine ko yung sinabi niya on this rock. Isa sa may isip ko, yung rock na tinatayuan namin. Because this temple was made on a rock. Pan was made on the rock. Si Peter yung nagsalita. That's why my Peter, Pan. Okay, so, so Wag niya i-notes yan. Iba yan. Doon nakuha si Peter Pan. Anyway. Iba sa inyo. Hindi na ako babalik dito. Hindi, hindi ko alam anong truth tsaka ang kalokohan. Nagahalo masyado. But going back, imagine you were speaking with Jesus and Jesus said this, on this rock. Of course, the disciples understood about the faith confession. But what they were seeing in their eyes, and lo and behold, as you look at the New Testament, the churches in Ephesus were put in places where there was idolatry. Because the church was meant to move forward. The kingdom of God through the church is meant to advance. Hindi lang tayo, in, kaya hindi lang tayo nag-invite. Kaya alam ba, at the end of the church, at the end of the service, hindi na end of the church, end, end, end ba tayo? at the end of the service, do we say, we send you out. You know why? Because each one of you who's part of the church, tingnan mo katabi mo, tingnan mo, habang pupunta sa mundo, nag-a-advance yung kingdom ni God. 
where there is idolatry, where there is darkness, where there is corruption, the gates of hell will not prevail. Yeah. Woo! Yan ang church! Kaya pala exciting sa church. Hindi pala ito yung parang, ah, sa church tayo, lungkot natin. Hindi. If we understand the whole setting of when Jesus said, on this rock, the totality of what it meant to the people in front of him and how it propagated. Nako, hindi ko pa kwinento lahat. Pero next few weeks, ikukwento ko sa inyo what this looks like in the different churches that Paul planted. Grabe talaga. Ganyan na ganyan. All of this. And everything I'm talking about, listen to me, everything I'm talking about is the church in seed form. May lumabas ng iba, hindi ko mapigilan. Di ba? And if each of one of us will understand who Jesus is. Ulitin ko, ha? If we will understand who Jesus is. Hindi, if we understand what the church is. Hindi. If we understand who Jesus is, then the church will become what it's supposed to be. Ulitin ko. It's not what we understand about the church. Mali. Wrong question. Wrong statement. It is who Jesus is. And when each one of us increasingly and progressively knows who Jesus is, then what the church is supposed to be, it will become that. And it all started here when Peter made that confession. And then he said this thing after that. Flesh and blood, and I tell you, and in verse 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdoms. This is singular, si Peter. I will give you the keys. Alam mo, ito pa lang. Ang dami nang pwedeng i-explain. Kasi dahil dito, there's a doctrine that it's really Peter. But it's not. Later on, you will see how this particular statement is also given, not just to Peter, but also to the other apostles. And by extension to the church at large. Because later on in First and Second Peter, Peter would speak about ano bang keys? Authority. In and out. Tama? Pag sinabi mong binding and loosing. Ano yung sabi ng binding and loosing? Mabilis na lang to. Ah. Mabilis na lang. Binding and loosing is a rabbinic idiom that talks about what is to be prohibited and what is to be permitted. Prohibited and what is to be permitted. What is to be prohibited must be bound. What must be permitted must be loose. All of us in the church, as you look at, in the next few weeks, I'll try to go back to this. Because in the church, this was displayed. The loosing and the binding. And Peter never said this. I am the one who has the key. Never did he say that in any he, he should have claimed it, but he did not. We assigned it to him in history. He did not claim any of that. But when you listen to his letter, when you, not, not oh, listen because that it's oral, but when you read First and Second Peter, when you look at Acts and how he moved, may kita mo that it was what? Conferred to the church. Galing. So, sabi ko nga sa inyo, we're not interpreting this based on our idea. Basahin natin yung word ni God. Tingnan natin paano. Si Peter mismo ang nagsabi. Hindi mo na kailangan kung sino-sino. Siya mismo sa letter niya. Siya mismo sa pamumuhay niya. On what it means. Pero siyempre, since siya yung sumagot, ako, na, na, plural, singular pa pala. Sorry, yung grammar, hindi ko na napuntahan. No? Kasi wala na tayong oras. Pero, maniwala muna kayo. <laughs> Hindi kasi i-explain mo dapat yung grammar kaya makikita mo yung sipil. Pero eto na muna. So nung binigay yung keys of the kingdom to Peter, actually, he was the representative of all who would have that faith confession in the future. And I'll give you the keys and later on you will see how that is conferred. Nako talagang, paulit-ulit ako no, kasi parang tempted akong i-preach siya. Pero ayoko rin muna. Next time ko na lang i-preach no. And she be bound in heaven and whatever you lose. So, ito, may practice to sa, sa acts. Makikita mo yan. Binding and loosing. Permitting and prohibiting. Using what? 
Now, ito yung kailangan ninyong malaman. Kasi the way the ESV and the NIV, the other English translation, the way the grammar was spoken was this. Whatever you bind, shall. Whatever you lose, shall. B. Tama? Okay. I will show you a translation that is a word-per-word translation from the original language. NASB. Yan. NASB. Pakita nyo. Yan. NASB. Binura ko naman, di ba? Yan. NASB. Sobrang excited. NASB. In a- look at NASB. And whatever you bind on earth... Look at this. This is the grammatical form. Shall have been bound. Okay. Bibilisan ko na. Ang galing. Kasi pag doon ka sa previous translation, shall be, parang sila yung boss. Whatever I bound, God, you must bound. Dito, shall have been. Meaning, God has already set what it should be bound, what should be not bound. All Peter has to do is to align himself. Tama ba? Who's the cornerstone? Jesus. What is a cornerstone do? We align ourselves. So ano yung mas tamang translation? Kung titingnan mo sa whole council of the word of God. Ito. God is the one who has been bounding. He is the one who rightly permits. He is the, right, the one who rightly prohibits. He is the reference point. All we're doing is enforcing that. Kaya mas tama na shall have been bound. Kaya I had, minsan lang ako pumunta sa ibang translation, but in this case, NASB takes the cake in terms of rightly translating it so that we don't think si Peter ang bida. Let me tell you, hindi pwedeng si Peter yung bida. Kasi kung basahin mo yung story ng chapter 16, mamaya sabihin, get thee behind me, Satan. Parang awa mo na. Kung sa kanya lahat naka-reference, at sa kanya naka-base lahat, to, we are in trouble. That's why the proper reading of the scripture is important so that we don't go the wrong way of what the church is and who Peter is. And then he says this, then he strictly charged the disciples not to tell, to tell no one. So after nitong service, tahimik lang tayong lahat ha. Sabi kasi sabay. Tama ba yung interpretation ko? Magbasa kayo, Hindi. The, listen to me, the only reason Jesus had to say that is because apart from the death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension of Christ, the confession of Peter has not, has not formed its full meaning, has not been revealed the full meaning. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, wait muna. Hintayin mo. So this is pre-resurrection Jesus saying, Wait lang. Pero post-resurrection, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, teaching them everything I've commanded, surely. At hama dapat si surely. Surely, I will be with you till the end of the age. Pre-resurrection to. So please, pag binabasa yung Bible, oh, dapat tahimik. So pagpunta mo sa work, tahimik. Huwag mo sasabihin to Jesus. Sabihin mo. Kasi post-resurrection, tayo. Dapat tama yung reading ng word. As I end. Hindi kayo niniwala, no? Totoo to. As I end. As I end. I want to go back to this. Who do people say the Son of Man is? But who do you say I am? These are the two questions. If we are ever going to be the church that God has called us to be. These two questions must be answered. Our knowledge of the answer to this question must increase. And so before we go, let me just tell you one thing. And let me encourage you in this. Are you ready? Ito yung pinaka practical way for us to answer this question. It's this one. Alam ko yung sinasabi ng iba. Pastor! Tapos na ako. Okay. For those of you who have not gone through one-to-one, this is my appeal. 
one-to-one is a simple booklet based on the Word of God that tells you who Jesus is, His person and His work, to increase your knowledge of who He is. Eh, pastor, tapos na ako. It's time for you to do one-to-one. Listen to me, listen to me. Iba yung tinanggap mo, iba yung ikaw na yung nagbibigay. Tanda? Tapos ito, Pastor, hindi mo yata natatanong. Naka isang libong one-to-one ako. <laughs> Ang yabang mo, one thousand, totoo? Okay, so, exact yun. Pero kung nagwa one-to-one ka na, ng iba, dagdagan mo pa, alam mo bakit? The revelation of the Messiah, Christos, the Christ, the Son of the Living God, is inexhaustible. Kailangan, as Christians, we never outgrow speaking of our faith so that we would continue to grow. So, uncle, mag one to one na tayo, ha? Wow, uncle. Uncle. mag one to one na ako. Bakit? Kasi, some of us need to receive and grow. Some of us need to what? Give and grow. Who do people say, Nasana? I hope, hopefully, no other people will dictate to you who Jesus is. But even as you continue to know Him, speak of Him, grow in Him, you can answer the question, but who do you say Jesus is? Why don't we all stand? Okay. Okay lang ba walang mahihiya ah? Sino pa sa inyo? Mabilis lang to. Sino sa inyo hindi pa kayo nag hindi pa kayo win na one to one? Ayun. Yung iba na kagano. Ito sure naman, para makita namin 'yan. Oh, hindi pa kayo nawa one to one, di ba? O oh, sige, alam mo habang na- kaya pinapataas ang kamay niyo kasi ganito, habang nakatasyo ka may mga ibang mga tao dito titingnan, lalapitan ka mamaya. Huwag ka matatakot. Except kung nakakatakot itsura nila pero. Pero ma- mabuting puso niyan. Okay. Sino sa inyo, winantuan na kayo pero hindi pa kayo nagwawantuan ng iba? Baka naman it's your turn. It's your time to shine. Sino sa inyo, nagwantuan na kayo ng iba, pero matagal na kayo hindi nagwantuan ng iba. Kasi nag-pandemic eh. Kayo yung pinaparinigan ko. Kilala ko kayo eh. Akala mo nagpaparinig ako? Hindi, dederechoin ko kayo. Ha? Kala nila. O, oh, ba? Sabi, ang hirap pala makilala ni Pastor. O, oh, ayaw niyo na magpakilala sa akin, ba? Oy, nakita ko nagtaas kayo ng kamay ha. Joking aside, if we are going to be the church that Jesus spoke of, then we have to answer the question, who do you say I am? Father, today, even as we have spoken the word, this is our prayer, flesh and blood did not reveal this. Lord, for many of us who are living this life, we know that flesh and blood did not reveal this. And so today, this is my prayer. By your grace and mercy, and by your Holy Spirit, open the eyes of the hearts of the people. Give them a revelation of who you are. And I'm not just talking about the people who has not gone through one-to-one. Even for us, who are ministering to others, continue to open our eyes. Lord, may our knowledge of you not just be based on flesh and blood, 
but may it be from the Father who is in heaven. Why don't we raise our hands? Father, we receive from your spirit. We receive from you, Father in heaven. We receive from you today a revelation, an increasing revelation of who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. God bless you. You are sent out.